Uh, I know this is your first time uh, to the Xizang region, and so must be an eye-opener, the trip. So what impressed you, you know, there? Well, there were so many things, so many things to process, and it will take me some weeks and months to process them. But the, uh, there's three things really that struck me most. The first one was the economic development in Xizang. Everywhere you looked, Everywhere you looked, there was evidence of economic development. It's not overnight. It takes a long time. Um, new infrastructure or rebuilt infrastructure, road, railway, telecommunications, all those sorts of things. Uh, new uh, modern buildings, but reflecting Shizang style, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, it was just absolutely astonishing. And it's one thing to read about it. One thing to research it, which I have done in the past. It's entirely another thing to see it firsthand, experience it firsthand. Um, related to that, of course, is poverty alleviation um, and some of the most difficult areas to, in the world, the remotest areas in the world. And then on the basis of the economic uh, development as a foundation, what it was struck me, uh, it was the development or flourishing of, of Shizan culture and education. And this is, it's not just a preservation of traditional culture, because culture is always renewing itself generation after generation. And that can happen with a, a firm economic foundation. And we visited a, a primary school, uh, Xiao Shui, also a high school, Zhong Shui, and a university. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was also very, very interesting that at the schools, they would learn a very sort of good teaching and you know, obviously, we the latest uh, knowledge and methods, even an artificial intelligence lab, in um, and this was in the high school, not in the university, uh, but also the way in which the children were being taught in their own language, so and learning all about the their own history, their own culture, while also Chinese history, Chinese, Chinese culture, the national language.